So we are once again out on a photography venture, adventure, adventure, and we're not in the Lake District. But there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. We'll get into it in a minute. First and foremost, a massive thank you to Squarespace for kindly sponsoring today's video, today's adventure. Um, if you need your own website for photography or anything else, go to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner and have a look. Let's get into it. That is absolutely gorgeous. I must be honest, I wanted to start today's video with a little bit of an explanation of the premise of this adventure that we're going on today, but we'll have to get into that in a second because I'm taking a little bit of an opportunistic photograph, or very much an opportunistic photograph, because the light, let me tell you, at this moment in time is wonderful, and I'm just trying to make the most of it. So I've got the tripod in a little bit of a dodgy position down here. I've got one leg down on the grass and the other two legs just spread across this dry stone wall. The only reason is, is because I need to get above this like metal bit here and you know I don't use a center column on this tripod so I can't quite get high enough but this is the first time I've ever had a problem with it to be honest so it's fine I'm just working with what I've got a little bit um, but yeah the photograph let's say there's probably four main elements to it we've got two subjects we've got a really nice barn he's gonna be on the right hand side of the frame then we've got this wooded gorgeous wooded hill on the left hand side um, but then what's making it for me here, as it so often does, is the light. And that's the final two elements. We've got shadows here in the foreground and highlights right off in the background there. Look how bright that is. In fact, it's just direct sunlight. So that's what I'm trying to make the most of. You know, I'm grabbing this opportunity. So the dark, I am bracketing. That's why I'm desperate to use my tripod here. The darker photograph is at 1 60th of a second. And the brighter one, which is for the foreground, is at 1 25th and I will blend them together as an exposure blend in Photoshop when I get home. But yeah, one to start the day that I wasn't really expecting, bearing in mind the location that I'm headed to, but you've always got to keep your eye out as a landscape photographer. <laughs> Gorgeous day. I'm not out for the sunset or anything today. It's just one of them. I mean, you'd have just seen it there with that shot. Um, rain, sunshine, uh, clouds, blue skies. It's just going to be everything and anything. Um, but yes, I think I mentioned I was in Yorkshire. Um, firstly, Lake District. I ain't got a problem with the fells and that and the Wainwrights. I love them. <laughs> but um, I don't know how to put it simply. I love the variety of landscape photography, the woodland different locations, the adventure um, of, of different locations around the country and stuff like that. So, you know, I think I did say it back when I started the Wainwrights. I don't want to get like narrow minded with it. I'll return to them soon enough. But, um, you know, especially with autumn coming up and then winter, I do want to do a lot local as well. You know, this is fairly local to me. Um, so that's that really. But yes, today's adventure, I wanted to say a massive thank you to um, a wonderful gentleman called Robert Smith, who I believe is a subscriber of mine. Um, and he sent me an email um, regarding today's location, just recommended it to me. And he said, it's not far from a location called Norba Erratics, which is up there that I went to sometime last year. And then it's worth a visit. And I'm very grateful for that. It's, you know, very humbling, I suppose, that someone would take time out of their own day to send me such an email and give me that recommendation. So I'm taking that from Robert and I'm going there today to see what it's got to offer. Uh, but I think it's gonna be spot on, you know, after doing a little bit of research. The only thing is, it's a little bit out of the way 
Nova Erratics is mint. You can just park right next to it and you know, you're good to go. Whereas this, I think it's gonna be about an hour from where I've parked, but that's fine. We love a bit of a wander. Um, so as always, let's crack on. So I've been walking for about an hour now and uh, I can finally see the destination. You see right from the background there, there's this sort of ridge line. I think what I'm gonna do is head up there and it's gonna be quite grand, you know? It's gonna feel, um, judging by a few photographs that I've seen online, it's gonna feel like um, we're in the mountains, really, we'll see. Um, and then sort of scoot round and do a bit of a loop this way and come back on myself, but I mean, you can tell there, the sky is still looking glorious. This is exactly what I want when I'm in this sort of landscape or probably any landscape, to be honest. <laughs> it's just my preference. Um, so yeah, I've got to head through this gate now, skirt down this dry stone wall, probably for about another hour, to be honest, maybe 45 minutes. And we'll see what he's got to offer. <laughs> Got there in the end. So I don't know about you guys, but there's something about this scene, I suppose, that I really like here. We've got two dry stone walls like this um, and then it's like this pass up leading out into this big scar here, which is where I'm headed to, this ridge line. I think it's worth a shot, you know, and I like that we've got um, the fence on this side. And even though it's man-made and stuff, you know, I always say I'm not mad on that sort of thing. There's something about dry stone walls that I always love. You know, some really organic feeling about them. I don't know. I don't know what I'm on about. <laughs> but no, it, lo it looks like it's... Um, there's potentially an opportunity for a shot. The only thing I want to do, probably keep walking for a little bit. I don't just want to get the camera out here and take it as is. I still want to think a little bit about how it leads out. If you look here, it just kind of stops around about there somewhere. So yeah, I'm going to keep walking a little bit and see if I can compose the foreground a little bit better. So a lot of you might remember I was up a fell on my Wainwright adventures called Lingmore Fell, probably, probably about a month ago, photographing the heather. And I got this photograph here that I was well happy with. I actually got it at the end of the particular video that I filmed on that day for YouTube. And it was just, um, well, at the time I thought it was just a little bit of a snapshot, but when I got home, it was actually my favorite image from that trip. And a lot of you guys, left some nice comments as well, so thanks a lot for that, and uh, a lot of you seem to have liked it, but yeah. Um, in a way, I'm gonna try and replicate just a little bit what I did with that photograph, where I've got the, the Z7, I've got my camera right close to this dry stone wall here, and I'm gonna have it leading out from probably the bottom right-hand corner of the frame somewhere, and I love that, you know? It's one of my favorite things to do as a landscape photographer, to have a real strong anchor and leading line right from the edge of the frame that takes the viewer's eye into, you know, whatever you want it to be taken into in your particular photograph. In my case here, of course, we've got this beautiful scar. It's wonderful. It's dotted with a load of sheep and quite a lot of slate as well. And the cloud, to be honest, we haven't got any light, which is a little bit of a shame, but the clouds for me are making it worthwhile here. They're, they're making me want to get my camera. I can't deny them, <laughs> you know. There's just a little bit of mood up there and it matches this scene perfectly for me, you know. Um, so it isn't going to be the best photograph in the world because of the lack of light, but it's definitely worth a quick snap, um, in my opinion. So as long as I don't overexpose that sky, 
I feel like I could make something of this, you know. Maybe try and just subtle, um, a few little subtle changes in Lightroom just to bring out those darker clouds and stuff. I absolutely adore doing that. Um, so yeah, they're the saving grace. <laughs> um, so we are, at this moment in time, what are we out here now? Let's have a look. Um, 1 15th of a second, F11 and ISO 64. The only thing I haven't really decided yet is how... Um, how or where I'm going to focus. I don't know if I'm going to um, focus off in the distance and have the wall sort of out of focus and then the image, you know, pull into focus as we get further into the frame or just a focus stack and have everything quite sharp from front to back. You know, I think I'm probably going to do that to be honest because this stone wall here in front of us is absolutely gorgeous and I think it would be a bit of a shame to have it out of focus, you know. Um, but we'll see. I think it's going to have been worth the stop. a little fence just to stop for a second or so to briefly have another little chat about today's video sponsor which is Squarespace who I'm very proud to work alongside. Um, I've been a proud also <laughs> owner of a Squarespace website for almost three years now and it is a right privilege to be sponsored by them. If you don't know who they are they're an all-in-one platform where you can create your very own website. So obviously this is a photography channel. Uh, you can have a photography website, but it doesn't just have to be photography, you know. Um, I absolutely love mine, and I say this time and time again, it's so easy to make a website with Squarespace. And for, bit, for me, it's been an absolute game changer with the sort of business side of my photography. Um, especially with all the e-commerce, you know, I can sell my prints on there, my one-to-ones, e-books, all of that sort of stuff, and it makes it effortless to be honest for me and I highly recommend Squarespace the customer service is class as well if you ever um, have any issues with them at all but genuinely couldn't recommend them enough so if you want to give them a go head over to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner and be sure to use the offer code Henry Turner at checkout for 10% off <laughs> your first purchase absolutely class product um, Right, we are at the scar now, look at this beast. So, it's time to start ascending. <laughs> so I'm just firing off a, a really quick handheld panel. Uh, I'm zoomed in about 60 mil, this is just before I get to the top, I'm nearly there now. But, look at it, it's as you can see it there. One hill on that side, one hill on that side. They are a bit more symmetrical than that. I just haven't set the video camera up very well. Hopefully you'll see with this shot. But yeah, zoomed in at 70 mil, so we get that nice compression effect. Um, and it's about five shots from left to right, or right to left. A lot of you have asked that. Is it all right to go the other way? It's absolutely fine. <laughs> I think I just prefer saying left to right because it's a bit more natural. It's like reading a book. <laughs> But yeah, beautiful, beautiful, what am I on about? Beautiful background. Um, and then some gorgeous moody clouds as well, but down here especially, we've got just, I, it looks actually like it might be raining over there. Get in, um, hopefully it comes over this way. Um, but it just looks wonderful off there in the background. So it's bright, you can see even there. So once again, I've had to really make sure um, not to overexpose that section, you know, keep an eye on my histogram. Focused, can you see him? There's a sheep there. He just, he's just a good distance away. I focused on him. There's your dinner. So, 
What's the saying? Be careful what you wish for. It is chucking it down. Get in, but you know what's coming. You know what's coming. We are out here, living the dream. Let's crack it on. Oh, 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 oh. That was a, a passing storm and a half. It's kind of gone probably over in that direction somewhere now. Um, but we're up, we're up on the top of the scar and this sort of stuff here, this beautiful limestone pavement is what I wanted to come here for. And um, another massive thanks to Rob, you know, without him, probably never would have come up here. Now you can see, this is where all that rain come from. There's light coming this way off. Not light, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, just not, you know, ominous looking clouds. <laughs> so I suppose in a way that's promising. If we do get a bit of light, even better. So now, um, all I want to do is just scour. Just scour! Um, you know, keep walking along this ridge line here and just see if there are any sort of lone trees or areas of limestone pavement or rocks. Anything I can work with in the foreground because that, ladies and gentlemen, the background is quality. So we are down low, <laughs> oh God, and we are on the limestone pavement, which is nice and wobbly as always. I feel like I've always got to say this when I come to these sorts of places with the limestone pavement. If you're gonna come here, just be careful. Wow, the light is looking stunning all of a sudden. Right off over there somewhere. Um, so that's partly the reason why I wanted to take this photograph. You'd have just seen a handheld shot then. Um, uh, shot, uh, I think it was ISO 800 or something, which was just me getting the juices flowing for this sort of photograph. And it's like a, this, a sort of a general photograph. Um, when I got up here, I knew I wanted to get this sort of shot, like a general photograph of all the limestone pavement in the foreground with the wide angle lens on. So that's what I've done. I've got the 14 to 30 mil lens on at 14 mil. Um, and I've just found a really nice section of diagonal lines that have taken us out into the scar, into all that stunning drama that really wasn't there earlier on. It's mint. Um, and then it sort of curves round into what was piping up about a second ago there, this sort of light. Wow, that is absolutely gorgeous. To be honest, I think I'll probably stick around here for a second with the camera set up because it's looking like we're almost going to be getting rays of light down in that valley back there towards Lancashire, absolutely stunning. So, I focus stack this. Um, this is like a, I don't know what, what I call this, like a classic sort of composition where I feel like I, I want to focus stack um, with a wide angle lens on the front there. And I'm so close to all this limestone pavement down here. Um, and, and in contrast, you know, the cliffs and, and all that light off in the distance, the valley is so far away. So I feel like I almost have to focus stack this. So one, just doing two, uh, actually, I might do three. I might do three. Two or three. <laughs> um, first image will definitely be focusing right in front of me, right underneath the lens. Um, yeah, maybe one in the middle, like the cliffs or something like that, but that'll probably be focused to infinity anyway. And then, yeah, you know, maybe one back off in the valley, just in case, whoa, that light is looking superb. So I'm pretty sure there's another section up here somewhere, which is probably even better <laughs> than where I've been. Um, because Rob, Robert did actually mention that in the email. Um, it's called Thieves Moss. But I think I'm gonna leave that for, for another day. Um, I have taken one more photograph just where I took that last one with the wide angle. I think when I was looking on the, on the LCD screen, 
at the preview of that wide angle shot. I don't think I liked it because all of that goodness in the background, all that light into that valley was kind of lost a little bit, you know, because of the wide angle. It was tiny up in the top right hand corner. So I did take one more shot, I'll show you now. Um, with the 24 to 200 lens, zoomed in slightly, I can't remember what, um, but it did actually bring that into the photograph a little bit more, which is something I always try to achieve. And I did a panel about four or five shots from left to right. So I'll leave you with that photograph. And I've, as always, I thank you so much for your support. Cheers for tuning in and I shall see you on the next adventure. Out.